Hey friends, it's Stravplay, here to help in your journey to Elite Smash. And first off, I want to say thank you so much for helping me reach a thousand subscribers. Your support and encouragement has been so helpful and I deeply appreciate it. And to celebrate this milestone, I'm going to show you how to beat Pokemon Trainer. That's right, three characters, Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard all in one video. So strap in, because this one's going to be big. And like always, I'll show you what moves to respect and what weaknesses to exploit. Let's get right into it. Okay, so first off, you need to respect Pokemon Trainer's absolute best move, Down Special. That's right, the Pokemon Change. Not only does this move grant the character a moment of intangibility, which is great for breaking out of combos, but out comes a completely different character with different strengths and weaknesses. Squirtle is a quick, small, combo-oriented turtle, Ivysaur is a medium-sized, zoning spiking Pokemon, and Charizard is a heavy, destructive, fire-breathing dragon. Your first step in consistently beating Pokemon Trainer is character knowledge. If you only remember how to beat Charizard from Smash 4, but you don't know how to beat Ivysaur, then that plant-based Pokemon will crush you. I've noticed that I typically run into three different types of Pokemon Trainers out there. First, there's the one who will start with Squirtle to perform combos and rack up damage at the beginning, then they'll switch to Ivysaur at mid percent, and then they'll switch to Charizard to survive longer and deal the final powerful blow. The second Pokemon trainer is a diehard fan of the true stock system. They'll play Solo Squirtle the first stock, Ivysaur for the second, and Charizard for the third, never switching in the middle of the battle. And lastly, the third trainer will play mostly one Pokemon the whole time. That's either because they're really good with one Pokemon and bad with the other two, or they gauge your playstyle and they use the Pokemon that best exploits your weaknesses. Either way, you'll need to know the strengths and weaknesses of all three Pokemon in order to win. So let's get started with Squirtle. I've heard most players say Squirtle is the worst of the three, except for Tweak, one of the best Pokemon trainers out there. He said Squirtle is best against good players. <laughs> and then like Squirtle was always the best one and they just aren't touching him even though he's like one of the best characters in the game. So here's what you should respect. Squirtle is small and nimble, which makes him hard to hit. He can dance around you, dealing combos and damage, all while you're swinging at the wind. You need to be precise with your attacks and predict his movements. Focus on using quick attacks like tilt scenarios. Save the smash attacks for safe punishes or for Ivysaur and Charizard. Squirtle is famous for his combos. He'll wreck up the damage so his more evolved partners can finish you off. If you get caught in a combo, try either DIing away by pressing the L stick away from him or use a quick attack as a combo breaker. Squirtle will usually start his combos by grabbing and throwing you. Make sure you move often to avoid getting grabbed. Also avoid his back throw at the ledge if you can. It can KO around 120%. Watch out for Squirtle's aerials. They're fast and a major part of his combos. His down air and back air are multi-attacks which are especially effective against shields. Make sure to hold the shield all the way to the end of the move and then attack. Squirtle's side special, Withdraw, is where he pulls into his shell and flies at you. He is immune to damage during it, but knockback will alter his trajectory, often setting him up for a punish. I recommend dodging this move or throwing a projectile to slow him down if you have one. You can also shield the move, but a good Squirtle will get away before most characters can punish him. And while it's hard to time, you could try fault stooling him during this move. If you do, it'll send him in a vulnerable state on his back for about 2 seconds, and this is a good chance to punish him hard. Squirtle's neutral special is Water Gun. He'll charge up his water and spray it to keep an opponent back. Get ready to mix up your recovery if you get pushed back off the ledge. A major weakness for Squirtle is that he's a lightweight. A powerful attack can kill him early. So when the opportunity arises for a smash attack, take it. Another weakness is Squirtle struggles to KO. His back throw and his smash attacks are really his only way to KO, and they can be difficult to hit. This is why most Pokemon trainers will switch to Ivysaur and Charizard when you're at high percents. Squirtle's recovery is pretty bad. His up special waterfall is easy to get edge guarded and it doesn't really have much upward movement. Go off stage and knock him back with a stronger weak attack and he cannot get back. Unless he switches to Ivysaur. Ivysaur's Razor Leaf is a fantastic zoning projectile. The leaves move slow and he can shoot them frequently. This means he can effectively pin you in the corner, making you hold your shield up for cover, and then he moves in for the grab or attack, racking up the damage. As with most projectiles, you should make a plan to get around them. 
Either jump over them or shield as you move in closer. Do not allow Ivysaur to camp on you. Watch out for Ivysaur's edge guarding. He'll usually use his down air to spike you near the ledge. This move is especially dangerous because it reaches so far below the ledge. You can often avoid this move by recovering faster or slower than what's typical. You can try recovering high to mix it up too, but that can be a little risky. Just do whatever you can to mess up his time. Another move to respect is Vine Whip. Ivysaur lashes a vine above him extremely fast and strong. He'll usually use it as part of a throw combo. When you get thrown, usually the eyeing upward and then jumping keeps you just above his Vine Whip. Make sure to respect the rest of Ivysaur's aerials. His up air is powerful and it moves him downward. His forward air, back air, and neutral air aren't strong in terms of knockback, but they're really good at keeping you from getting too close to him. His neutral air has a long multi-attack and very little end lag, which makes it difficult to punish. You'll have to shield and then use a quick move to punish properly. I've also got to mention Ivysaur's smash attacks. Down smash is really fast, but bad at KOing. Up smash is really slow, but great at KOing. And forward smash has a deceptively long reach making it difficult to punish when you shield it, and it can KO as early as 85%. One weakness for Ivysaur is he is slow. He's not one to chase after you, so he'll usually throw his razor leaves, playing defensively. This works against him when you've got a quick character who can rush him down. He's not fast enough to avoid your pressure, so when you get close, play aggressively, and don't let him get away to set up camp again. In addition, he's easy to combo, so try to chain your attacks together, hitting him over and over, not giving him room to breathe. Since Ivysaur has a hard time breaking combos, Pokemon Trainer will often switch to Charizard, hoping to throw you off mid-combo. You need to be looking out for this. If you time it right, you can hit Charizard as soon as he comes out, bringing him right into the rest of your combo. One of Ivysaur's worst moves is Bullet Seed. It shoots seeds upward, not having much range on its sides. It's mostly used to stop aerial approaches and as part of combos, but if he misses, then you can move in easily and punish. And Ivysaur's last weakness is he has a predictable recovery. He can only use his Vine Whip, which will attach to the ledge. He can't be too close to the stage or else he'll miss. So when Ivysaur's off stage, you can definitely anticipate how he's going to approach the ledge, or you can jump out and knock him back with a soft aerial, or even throw out a projectile, and that's enough to keep him from getting back. Against good Ivysaur's, you'll need to watch out for his Vine Whip cancels. It can fake you out if you're not ready. He usually does it just above and near the ledge. If you're patient, he'll come to you on stage and you can punish. Ivysaur knows his recovery can be predictable and that's why he'll often switch to Charizard, especially at Hypersense. And now you got something entirely new to deal with. Although Charizard is a very heavy character, he's surprisingly fast on the ground. Don't think you're safe at a distance from Charizard, because that is far from the truth. He can close that gap quicker than you think. You'll need to respect Charizard's up smash. It's extremely fast and has a wide range. He'll often use it out of shield, and it can KO as early as 100%. So don't jump too much just above Charizard, and don't use unsafe laggy moves when you're really close, because this will be his optimal punch. All of Charizard's aerials are fantastic and deserve your respect. His neutral air has a large hitbox and little end lag, making it hard to punish. His forward air is really good at edge guarding. His back air is deceptively long and powerful, and he uses that back air to corner you on the edge of the stage at hypersense, but it's not easy to land because it's slow. His up air can KO at 100%, and his head has intangibility, and of course, his down air is a powerful spike. And add to all that, Charizard has two air jumps, so that can prolong his time in the air, making it difficult to anticipate his approach. Charizard's grab game is exceptional. His down throw leads into combos, his forward air and back throws are pretty good, but his up throw is his main killing throw, KOing most characters around 150%. So try not to get grabbed. Just like Bowser, Charizard can lay on the damage with his flamethrower. I'm surprised how many people fall victim to these flames and end up with 30% of extra damage. It'll poke around your shield and he can angle his flames upward and downward. So try to avoid this move by moving around the stage often, and when you get caught, just try moving away from it ASAP. Charizard's spammiest move is his Flare Blitz. If you're not ready for it, then it will destroy you quickly. Charizard spins quickly at a horizontal angle and it explodes whatever he runs into. 
It will beat out most attacks and projectiles, so don't bother. But by far the best way to handle this move is to just shield it. He will slam into your shield, causing damage to himself, and then he'll land on the stage next to you on the ground. Now, make sure you do a quick punish here, because he'll get up faster than most people are ready for. At high level gameplay, Charizard will rarely use this move, because he knows you can easily shield it. But watch out for the occasional fur blitz when he thinks you'll least expect it, or as part of a risky combo off stage. Be on your guard for Charizard's forward tilt. It's fast and has a very long reach. He'll use it often to keep you from approaching on ground. Avoid this by mixing up your approach. Charizard's major weakness are his lagging moves. Most of his moves that hit the hardest are risky and easy to punish. So if you manage to block or dodge his big attacks, then you'll have an open window to take the offensive. The good Charizard will avoid using these moves as much as possible. But even then, the fast character can overpower him. Some of Charizard's moves have really bad sour spots, such as his forward tilt and back air. While landing the sweet spot is really powerful, it can be difficult to do consistently. The closer you are to Charizard, the harder it is for him to land those sweet spots. Being a large heavy character, Charizard struggles against rushdown characters with fast combos. He can try to break combos with his Nair, but if you work around that, you can lay on the damage and make him hurt. Pokemon Trainer knows this, and so he or she will typically wait to bring out Charizard only at high percents where combos don't connect as well. At this point, your main goal is just to win a strong move and KO Charizard. And this leads to another major weakness. Charizard often relies on hard reads. That means he'll recklessly attack, not where you are, but where he thinks he'll move to. If you're playing too predictably, then this will be your downfall. And you'll usually face Charizard at high percents, so that's typically when most players get nervous and land safe. So, you need to keep your wits and stay calm. Don't let him bait you, so bait him to throw out a laggy move, and then you move in and claim your KO. Charizard has the best recovery of the three, but you can still exploit it. If he's far off stage, he'll often use his Flare Blitz to recover high. Make sure to not get hit by that. You can try to put yourself in position on stage to punish his landing. From below the stage, he'll use his up special Fly to recover. This move has super armor and isn't as easy to beat as you think. You'll need to use a powerful spike or a strong aerial to edge guard it. And for all you casual players out there, Pokemon Trainer's final smash is called Triple Finish, where all three Pokemon come out and release a powerful, super effective horizontal attack across the screen. Do your best to stay below, above, or behind that beam and you'll be safe. And with all that said, let's have some fun beating Pokemon Trainer. Out of the three Pokemon, which one's your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, thanks for the many requests of which characters make a video of next. Keep them coming. You guys are awesome. And I'll see ya.